Right now on the internet, podcasts and their hosts have become a massive part of the content that people, including myself, consume on a daily basis. One of these podcasts and personalities that has been popping up for me more and more is Lex Friedman, a computer scientist, AI researcher and podcaster who talks to guests on topics ranging from AI and science to philosophy and technology. Now alongside this growingly popular podcast, he often takes to Twitter and his YouTube channel to share his thoughts on these topics as well as books that he may have finished recently. Lately, however, Lex's reading habits became inadvertently embroiled in some drama. The drama in question was this reading list, a seemingly innocent post that was met with mixed responses, with people calling Lex out on his obvious choices and his high school curriculum level reading list that he had put together, but also for him apparently scheduling just a week to finish works such as Dune, Sapiens, and the Brothers Karamazov. Now this got me thinking. With the response that this post received and the claims of how difficult and grand an undertaking it would be to try and finish a book like the Brothers Karamazov within seven days, how hard actually would it be? Okay, I feel like I should add a bit of context here. I may have this pile of books at the end of my bed, but I'm not the most prolific reader. Especially in the last year, I've been finishing a degree, and that has removed a lot of the time and effort that I would have had to go towards reading. Most of my reading has been done on a screen, PDFs, and for purely academic reasons. As well as this, I do work 40 hours a week, so I'm going to have to factor in these hours into the challenge. Luckily for me, this is the quietest time of the year for hospitality work, so I'm hoping that in my downtime, I'll still be able to get through a few pages. And finally, I don't actually own the book, so let me just buy it real quick. Day one, just woken up. Got the book in my bag because today I've got work all day, 10 until 10. I'm hoping that it's relatively quiet and that we get a good amount of pages done. But I think the start's always going to be the hardest. Or not, I don't really know. I've never tried to speed read a book in a week before, so let's find out. So with that, I made my way into work. It would have been really nice to start this challenge at home with a nice full day of lounging on the sofa and reading. But sadly that wasn't possible. So I got my 12 hours at work in. I did manage to get a good bit of reading in as there was a lot of downtime. But before I knew it, day one was coming to a close. Just got home from work. And obviously. Dostoevsky was with me. I am currently at page 100, which felt like a decent place to, to finish my last stint, but that means that if I want to keep to schedule, which I think is the only way I'm actually going to be able to do this, I need to read about 40 more pages in bed. So that's what the, uh, that's what the plan is. 40 more pages and sleep. All right, checking in for day two. Currently behind target already. Not a great start. I did get a few pages done in bed this morning, but nowhere near as many as I hoped to. I also plan to come out here and read outside while it's nice and sunny. However, although it's sunny, it's also two degrees. So it's not perfect reading weather, to be honest. I am freezing. So I'm gonna get through a few more pages here and I think I'm just gonna have to retreat back inside and keep going from there. But for now, let's continue. While I settle into another stint of reading on day two, I thought I would just quickly go into why I chose to do this and 
Why the brothers Karamazov? Why Dostoevsky? Well, as someone who's quite interested in philosophy in general, and someone who listens to a lot of podcasts, as I said, Lex Friedman was someone that had been coming up more and more for me. And so as I began to listen more and more, I did notice that there was this reoccurring theme and that people would bring up books such as Crime and Punishment and The Brothers Karamazov. And regardless of how much I might agree or disagree with each person that was bringing up these books, the statements of how incredible a piece of literature it is, as well as looking through the comments section and seeing a sea of responses of how brilliant these novels were, it sparked an interest in me that I could no longer ignore. You know what? Let's go to Dusty Yesky. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Let me talk about the Brothers Karamazov. Yes. Partly because that's the last novel that Dostoevsky wrote. I think it's certainly one of the greatest novels of the 19th century, uh, maybe the best. And I'm about to. Teach. And so I thought, seeing this drama that Lex was embroiled in come up, and seeing that the Brothers Karamazov was on the list, why not give it a go? With that being said, and with these glowing reviews of the book. Uh, I did find that the first hundred pages hadn't gripped me. I was finding it pretty hard to adapt to the writing style. I think in part because it's an old book, you know, Dostoevsky was around in the mid 1800s and it's a translation from 1800s Russian to English. I was reading an early translation, which made it slightly more annoying <laughs> to get into, but let's rejoin me as I come to the end of day two and begin to see what the book has in store for me. So day three came around and it was the first full free day that I had. Aside from a couple of things that I wanted to get done, I had the whole day free of work to be able to get some reading done and some progress on the book. I really had to make progress this day because I had fallen a little bit behind schedule already and this became my chance to pull that back. So, after getting what I wanted done, I settled in to a large stint of reading. Got through the whole target of about 130 pages for the day in one sitting, but I did realise that that was unsustainable. Um, I probably couldn't sit and do another stint like that anytime soon, so I'm going to have to change up the tactics here. All right, day three. Good progress is being made. I had the day off, so I was able to just sit and read for way longer than I think I have in a long, long time. I was beginning to go a little bit crazy. But I do have to say the book is very good. It's introduced, you know, most of the main characters and brought together a grand story of how each of them came to be, where we find them in our current state in the story. But it is showing its age a little bit. There are very long portions of just dialogue between characters. And yeah, maybe I'm just not one for the writing style, I'm not sure. But we made good progress. I'm enjoying its world building, I'm enjoying how it's introduced each of the characters very thoroughly. You've got very good in-depth understanding of who these characters are quite quickly because descriptions of their childhood upbringing, their sort of socio-economic status at that point are all devised very in-depth, but at the same time, that does take away from my reading enjoyment, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, reading a four or five page monologue of someone's thoughts, sometimes incoherent thoughts, as they sort of ramble their way through a conversation with another character, is a little bit tedious. <laughs> um, especially after you do it one after another after another. But, that being said, I am looking forward to seeing where the book goes and continues to develop. So let's see, we're at book seven now. So although today was a little bit of a slog, I'm hoping that with that big push, I can stick to the actual uh, schedule I gave myself now over the following days. I'll try and do a few more pages in bed and we'll see where we're at after that. Thursday morning, we're still going. 
forcing myself for a few pages in bed before I start the day, but I think I'm going to have to do something other than read today, uh, just to break up how many words are flying off of the page, <laughs> because it's a bit too much at the moment. So I'm going to get a few more pages done now, then do something completely different with my day for a little bit, give myself an hour to just completely forget about the world of the brothers, and uh, then return to it when I think I'm a bit more able to actually take on board what's going on. Because I've found myself getting a little bit lost here or there as I make my way through the next set of pages. I want to actually make sure I'm taking on board everything. So I did just that. I took the next couple of hours to walk to the gym. It was a really nice day. So I wanted to just get outside. Had a little bit of a workout and just took my mind off of the book for a little bit. That evening, however, I was back to work and the book was coming with me. It was a quiet night overall and I had let a few of my mates know that I was doing this challenge. So throughout the evening, sometimes people would come up to me and ask how it was going. And this kind of helped me both process what I had actually read through explaining what might be going on at that time to different people, but it also helped as a sort of form of self-imposed societal pressure to actually get the challenge done. I'd told people now, so I didn't want to turn up next week and tell them that I failed. So that got me through another chunk of pages. I've just finished work and I'm on my walk home. The clock has just struck midnight. So that means that we now just have, well, three days of the challenge remaining. I'm very much into the, the core of the book now. I'm understanding it more than when I first set out because it's it's a book unlike others that I've read recently or at all really um, it's very character driven it's the writing style obviously has aged but does put you in a place that I'm not used to being in you know uh, pondering large spiritual and human questions it's it's quite an interesting exercise it is also pretty heavy reading at times <laughs> so we have just under half of the book to go I think I'm around page 475, something like that. Got a few pages done tonight, but not as many as I would have hoped. So I'll read a few in bed and then yeah, it's gonna be a big push to get the rest of the book done in three days, but we might just be able to do it. Let's see what happens. Entering into the final phase of the challenge, I knew that the next few days were gonna be a lot of reading. Not that the first half of the challenge hadn't been a lot of reading, but pretty much every waking moment I had free was now going to be taken up turning the pages of the Brothers Karamazov. Okay, not all of them, but pretty much all of them. Day seven begins, I'm at work. I'm pretty sure the audio's a bit echoey right now, so I'm gonna keep it brief, but that's how much we have to go. I think it's doable. It's gonna be a push. I'm gonna get as much as I can done here, but it's not gonna be amazing. But realistically, I think it's gonna to be tonight when I get home that I'm gonna to have to just do one last push if I wanna get this done. So uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Oh, right. As you can see, I'm not at work. I wasn't completely able to get through what I wanted to earlier, but I thought that I'd try and cut into a few more of these remaining pages before tonight, where I'll make a final push and finish this thing. I'm very much into the story now. I am uh, also growing pretty tired of, of reading <laughs> in general. So let's just keep pushing, get a few pages done. So I kept going. I tried to not look at the page counts as much as possible because at this point reading really wasn't that enjoyable. But I knew that I could finish it if I made a good enough effort right now, so I pushed on. Right, checking in. It is Sunday at quarter to eleven and uh, I've just arrived in the final chapter of the book. 
So the only thing left to do is to get through the following four or so pages and be done with the challenge. Well, there we are. That was the Brothers Karamazov. <sighs> wow. Right, that was a lot. <laughs> that was 985 pages in one week. Right, it's Monday afternoon, seven days after I started reading The Brothers Karamazov, setting out to answer the question, can you read a novel such as this in one week? And I found that yes, if you are willing to force yourself to get through many, many pages a day, you can finish a book like this in a week. But should you? No, <laughs> you really shouldn't. I found myself at times really struggling to get through the page count. Every sort of three or four pages I would glance up and see that I had a you know, hundred more pages to go on that stint if I wanted to actually make it. Uh, and that did suck out a lot of the joy of reading a book like this. There were times, however, where I was fully gripped by the story, I was pulled in. It is an incredible novel. I completely understand why Lex put it on his reading list and I'm glad that he did so because that's what prompted me to pick it up in the first place. As Sigmund Freud on the back there says that it was the greatest novel ever written. Uh, I'm not sure I've read enough novels to be able to confirm or deny that, but it was incredibly good. The three brothers themselves are obviously vital characters to the book, and you do find yourself seeing aspects of your own personality through the characters of the novel. Perhaps you might want to be more of an Ayusha, but you might actually be more of a Dimitri. But even these characters, there are good parts of them, and you can actually see this good in them. By having them be redeemable, it really captures what it is to be human. And I believe that Dostoevsky puts that across better than anyone I've ever read before. He really does have a special way of putting across a character's dilemmas, their core components of who they are, their essence, and yeah, I have not experienced that with any other writer thus far. And so when I was reading through, especially after around page 300, after the introductions of many of the characters and in-depth conversations between them where you're learning about who they are, I was able to get into the book a lot easier than initially. And when I did, you have commentaries on humanity, on spiritualism, courtroom drama, murder mystery. It really does have a lot in here. But you'd hope so, because it's 900 pages long. But uh, yeah, very happy I read it. It's an incredible, incredible novel. I mean, you don't need me to tell you that. I can't say that this has made me want to read more for pleasure, to be honest, because The Undertaking was kind of to the point where I was no longer enjoying it, even though I could recognize how incredible the writing and the book itself was. When you're forcing yourself to do 140 pages at a time, I don't think any book's gonna hold up for too long. So I would say, yes, you can read this in a week as Lex scheduled for himself, but you shouldn't. Give yourself two weeks, give yourself a month, and really, take the time to enjoy it because I'm gonna have to put this down now for, for a while, but I'm hoping that in a year or so or a couple of years, I can return to it and actually give it the time to digest that it requires because there were things that were quite profound that I kind of had to just move on from quite rapidly to actually get the challenge done. But I did it. So thanks for watching. Thanks Lex for inspiring me to actually pick this up because even though people ripped you on Twitter and were calling you out for how long and how difficult it would be to finish in a week and also that it was like high school curriculum material. We definitely weren't reading Dostoevsky in, in secondary school where I grew up, so yeah, thanks for that. So that was The Brothers Karamazov in one week and I'm now very tired and burnt out on reading. And uh, if you enjoyed, let me know. If you didn't, let me know why.